Okay, at this rate, maybe, just m maybe, probably, we are a TCG podcast? Maybe. Uh, d it, dear viewer, you're in the denial arc of the <laughs> Paramecia fancast, where we refuse to accept that we might be a One Piece TCG podcast, or a TCG podcast in general. I... I feel like we'd have to like tap into magic and um I guess there's Everybody. another one. Let's get let's become a Lorcana podcast. Dude, let's a Lorcana dude. Lorcana I'm play wait, dude, hold on. Dude, I'm gonna play the most broken steamboat willy dick, dude. You don't <laughs> even know, dude. Dude, Oswald oh, bro. top tier. People are not ready for hold my on. Oswald control deck. Elsa, how are you, wait, are you on TCG Player looking at Lord Kana prices? Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. I want to. I want to. We're playing to. a game. We're playing a game. Disney Lord Kana shop. No, 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 no. We're we're playing a game. Please, John. Okay, okay. So is Oswald a card? I'm gonna search for Oswald. No, okay. Yes, yeah, search for Oswald, please. I do need a confirmation. But um, this is as it's as it stands right now. I am finding six. Printings of Elsa. They're nice. all distinct except for uh, one is a promo, one is not. Um, but yeah, six printings, only one dupe. Dude, um, a, a D23. I see it on the right hand side. I haven't clicked it, but there's D23 promos from like. That's the promo. Okay. So um, I want to. So when I look at where the prices I'm talking about are going to be market price, okay? Okay. Not not the price like you know the first price you see on TCG player is listings as low as dot dot yeah, dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking market price. Yeah. Okay? So what is the cheapest Elsa card? Oh, I'm going to say like I'm going to say like 100. Damn. So you you got the you got your you got the spirit you'd really do, but this is a common. It is twenty cents. Okay. But okay. Okay. It's like not super fancy. It's like in the second movie where she's like surfing on the ice. Oh, did they do the classic? Uh, just take a print screen of the movie and then put it on the card. Thank goodness, no. Okay. But okay. It it's like it seems to be like one kind of like set aesthetic for most of the game it seems okay so there's another next highest printing is 23 cents and then we have an uncommon going for two dollars 29 cents all right there is a um i don't know if it's the next highest rarity but I'm seeing a card at the legendary rarity. How much money, John? Okay, the legendary one has got to be... That sounds like more than rare. Right. So that for Elsa, that's got to be the one that's like... All right, I'll put like $80. I'll put like that. That's a, that's a big boy purchase. Not bad. Forty-eight fifty-three. dollars Okay, okay. okay. I'm overshooting so, a little bit. So. You're overshooting a little bit, but uh, still, your heart's in the right place. <laughs> now, there's apparently a, a level beyond Super Saiyan. Um, it is an alt art of that printing. Oh. How much is it? That's the one that's got to be like 100 that's the one that's got to be like, oh, the alt art of the same card. Would you like to high. guess again? Oh, okay. Wait, higher or lower? I'm assuming higher. higher. Yes. Okay. Is it like <laughs> one? Is it like 150? Brother man. $710. Uh, I, I, no. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 no, no, no. I, oh, okay, okay, okay. Thing. Just, just the one more. Thing. Thing. Okay, okay. $700? Yes. So, okay. For context, my understanding is that the D23 promos came out before the game even was a thing. So uh. the initial market for it 
didn't know what the actual market would look like, right? Yeah. We have pre-release promos priced one way because the game doesn't isn't real. It doesn't exist yet. Yeah. And then there's actual like in situ market value. The promo, the D23 promo card, which is a printing of the $2 Elsa. The market price I'll give you. But there's only one listing and I want you to tell me how much that listing is. Oh, so God. the market price before the game even was a thing was five hundred dollars. Jesus Christ! How much is this D twenty three Elsa promo card? How much is this one card shop slash individual? It's an individual. Um, it is grade PSA nine. How much is this person asking? Oh God! I'm gonna. It, is it like? Are they asking like two thousand for it? I'm guessing like four times the amount. It's somewhat worse. Oh my god! No. It is. This person is asking from YGO memes, Kevin. <laughs> Dude, Kevin. What, Kevin. Okay. What is Kevin hitting me with? Six grand. You six grand, dude. Dude. Hold on. Can I look? Is there? Is there? It, don't tell me there's any more. Is there? Any no, more? no, no, no. That's it. You, you can go look. You can verify. Okay. Um, Disney. Okay. I'm seeing the seven hundred dollar one. D twenty three promo market price five hundred. Is this the one Snow Queen? Yes. <gasps> and he has the audacity to charge ninety nine cents for shipping. <laughs> My brother in Christ, I'm giving you six grand. <laughs> Oh my fucking god. What does she even do? Okay, freeze. Exert chosen opposing character. What does that this, mean? She literally what a just. Weird verb. She just rests a character. I think that's what it does. Because I see right. a little picture of a card turning. Dude, she's a 2 3 that rests. <laughs> yeah, because she's a promo off of like a fucking nothing card. She's like not Bruh. even like the banger. Of the of like Elsa cards, there's like an eight cost Elsa card. I imagine it's better than this, without even reading it. <laughs> like I, I'm about to read it. it. <laughs> Shift six. You may pay six Splingies to play this on the top of one of your characters named Elsa. Deep freeze. When you play this card, exert two chosen characters. They can't ready at the start of their next turn. All right, that's okay. She's. She's ten cost Doflamingo from uh, <laughs> from One Piece. Yeah. She says, hey, "Hey, those two characters that are rested, yeah, they're not untapping on your next turn." Okay, hold on. Biggest brain. Let me just look at the D twenty three. Uh, what came out in the D twenty three promos, and let's look at the prices. So the seventeen results. I'm getting. Thank you, TCG player. Please let your fucking people unionize. Fuck you, eBay. Um, God damn. It is taking its sweet time. Okay. Out of stock. Yeah, it seems like most of these sold uh, before the game was even real. Because I'm looking at market values $1,200-ish. I yeah. really like that Mickey Mouse Brave Little Taylor. Yeah. But I don't need the promo version. Yeah. I like the artwork for Lorcana. I don't know what's going on. I'm loving this stitch. I like the little I like little stitch. Yeah. Um and I'm seeing a person once sold. Yeah. A person sold at some point on my birthday, August 9th, an unopened set of six. With like a whole thing with it and everything, uh, no grading, no nothing, twelve thousand dollars. That's insane. That's insane. No grading, no nothing. If I'm no, I'm sorry, but Disney if people I'm, are on some yeah, shit. Yeah, like if I'm buying a card from you for collector, purely collector's purpose, mother, you better, you had better have graded that thing. Like, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's. God, this is There's crazy. No reason yeah, not Disney to. people are crazy, dude. I, I'm glad we went down that rabbit hole. Um, this is insane, dear dear listener. 
um i'm going to share a video in the show notes um even if you're not totally into card games at all this video is super interesting um it just talks about how the digimon tcg is the cheapest card game on the market well is it 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 poses the question is digimon tcg really the cheapest and the exact it it uses digimon and one piece as the examples of like cheap tcgs to compare against other games because like one piece is also bandai namco and they're like really uh they're really pushing both on their tcg market so they use both as kind of an example um dear viewer they have the same kind of like rarities there's a lot of similarities if you want to play tcgs i will boil the video down to um play digimon one piece or pokemon because the other ones are because Yu-Gi-Oh and magic are outrageously overpriced like some of y'all for, talk for to two, us yeah uh, in the like tcg chat on our discord about how bad magic has been yeah like, i think someone was saying that like they so like commanders like the pretty big format nowadays instead of like playing modern um that like a commander deck is like 80 bucks msrp or something and that's like to have one you know i wonder if um okay yeah 64 bucks is what that was and um that's not even like a good one right that's just one that like comes out the box magic's not the kind of game to my understanding commander is not the type of shit where you just like okay like i i bought a structure deck let's go yeah they have magic has like pre-built commander decks that you can buy um they have been i will say following magic from like when i played fairly consistently back in like 2011 versus like now magic has definitely i think done the best job of like embracing and making official all of their other formats i yeah a hundred percent agreed on that yeah because like standard was i mean again this is all based on when i played back like fresh out of like high school um and it was like there was only standard and then modern was like a fan-made sort of thing like oh you could play modern these are like the the band list that's like the community kind of made up now it's like i think modern is like called something else officially by wizards of the coast and it's like an official like sanctioned game mode and then commander's also like official now and they sell commander decks and like some of the sets are just straight up made for commander formats yeah. I, and i'm pretty bummed about it because like commander's what i want to play like yeah sure it's it's like kind of from my understanding very very limited understanding it's like hardcore one piece uh the tcg style it like takes more after hearthstone yeah i suppose is the better comparison but like it's a fucking 100 stack yeah I'm the dumb motherfucker who likes to play 60 stack in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's the 60 stack, dude. So, like, you're telling me I can have 100 cards in my deck? Like, come on, man. But no, (laughs) I'm not fucking... I'm spending too much money on cardboard as is. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, me too, but... It's, uh, look, oh, One Piece, <laughs> the One Piece card game, I relapsed. I, I am an addict. Uh-huh. I'm, an, uh, I'm an opioid addict that I don't need the drug. I mean, One Piece. I... One Piece puts the OP in opioid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is, oh, yeah. um, the One Piece card game is so much fun. Like it really I, is. I I feel so happy because I was playing, I was playing some games like on the sim, and like, dude, it's just the One Piece card game. Uh, for for my people that like fighting games, they, what Bandai has done with the One Piece card game is kind of like what most fighting game developers have 
wanted to do with their fighting games as of recent years. Like they want to make the the they want to make the playing field like they want to make the skill ceiling lower. Yeah. But, but still give you like the high like the high end gameplay aspects of it. Like that you know, that you still want the high octane like like you know uh competitive vibes to your yeah. game. And like, I feel like the One Piece game has what they've done is they've made the rules of the game simple, but now the second layer of the game that is like built into it with like the counter system and stuff is the mind games. Cause now it's yeah. like, okay, am I going to give up part of my hand? Like, am I going to give up part of my hand to save this guy? But if I do that, then he can swing at my other guys. So I want to save, I'll take the damage now to save some of my guys to maintain board presence uh, or on the opposite end of it. It's like, okay, I'm his leaders, 5,000, um, I can attack 5,000 or I can attack 6,000. So now, like, I'm forcing him, okay, he's either going to use, like, he'll either have to use one, like, t one counter card, the big counter, the 2K. He can use a 2K counter or he has to give up two cards from his hand, two 1K counters in order to stop my attack. Or he could not and take the life and that puts me at life advantage going into the next turn. Um... Or if you're playing a deck like Yamato, where like he loves to be at life disadvantage, then yeah. it's like, oh god, I'm s like I'm actually scared to swing into you now because the less life you have, the better you become. <laughs> like, it it's so interesting. I I want to think of it like a. It kind of doesn't necessarily have like plateaus, so to speak. Yeah. You just have to be like generally game minded to get into it, which nowadays so many people are. Like yeah. it's it's not the it's not the one piece of card games insofar <laughs> as the live action has like brought everyone into like yeah, trying yeah. the anime. Um it's not gonna do that for TCGs. Like I can't go to my mom with the TCG. Yeah. But like it I is, can go to yeah. like any of my cousins if they would humor me, you know, or, around that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But the the skill seal, like it, I would say that there's like a kind of like ah, uh, so do you do you know what like a a Gaussian distribution is like in statistics? Do you remember uh, like just the oh. normal quote unquote bell curve? Like, yeah. Yes. 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 Right yes. down the middle. Yes, so, the classic. Um, the the classic. I'm gonna mash throw on wake up, and then when the bell curve gets to the top, oh my setup didn't work. I'm so mad. It was frame perfect. Yes. And then the ultimate competitive player. Lol. I'm gonna mash throw on wake up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Precisely that. Thank you. Now, like, cut that in half, and then like, flip the right hand side. So, like, it, like, hooks up again and then just, like, attach them in your mind. I have, like, no other way to ex describe this. I'm so sorry. Oh, yes. Rise, plateau, rise again, plateau. <laughs> right. Or, like... Like a staircase, almost. Basically. But, like, the the rise into the first plateau and then going into the second final plateau... That is, like, not super steep, and I feel like it's pretty short. Yeah. Like, and the 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 thing that covers that is just, like, t general TCG tactical game sense. Like yeah, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so forgiving, and really would come down to, like, I, I know there's a tier list. I know that, like, Whitebeard is like one of the better decks right now uh, since like OPO3. I get yeah. that. But like, I'm White really Beard confident. And Zorro. <laughs> as long as you're not playing like a doggy doo doo deck, like if you know half a thing about deck building and you know you're not playing something that's kind of like dead on arrival, yeah, like the Iceberg deck. Yeah. I don't, that's my first impression. I really don't know much about the deck, but. As long as you have that, what makes the difference 
is like genuinely game sense. You can still overcome that with game sense. Yeah. Just because you play like the best deck, the disparity between decks doesn't seem that bad. I M O. There are some like matchup like things, but that's there. We're we're talking on a like this versus that scale, not yeah yeah everything. It's been twenty minutes. We haven't introduced ourselves. Yeah, uh, welcome, Paramis fan guest, the One Piece fan guest, where we review the latest chapters of One Piece and have different One Piece related discussions every single week. My name is John. My name is Franz. Um, One Piece TCG, good. Genuinely, if you're if you've considered it, go ahead and try it. If yeah. if you feel it's not for you, don't worry. Like. Yeah. Stay that way. Like that that sounds yeah. a little passive aggressive. Stay that way. Stay um, that way. Like no, that's definitely, all good. You don't have to try yeah. it. Yeah. If you have even the slightest interest, I feel there's like really no buts, especially with like the fan sim going on. Yeah. Like I would definitely try the fan sim and just yeah. like just go crazy looking at the cards and like deck building. If you like deck building like i feel like the game is new enough to where like there's a lot of different options as the new sets come out dude Um, it's crazy yeah i did not think deck building would be so interesting in this game yeah i just um i i told franz before recording everyone knows i'm a doflamingo main if a fighting game ever comes out for one piece like an arxis fighting game and doflamingo's in it Dog, if Doflamingo has 10 fans, I'm one of them. If Doflamingo has one fan, I'm one of them. Um, that being said, friendship with uh, blue Doflamingo ended. Crocodile. Mono blue crocodile is my new best friend. I don't blame Th- you whatsoever. This deck is so much fun. And, like, I feel like it's only going to get better. Um... It's it started off as like an okay deck, like it was like whatever, but like oh my god, it's just it. The only way I can describe it is it's the color blue in Magic: The Gathering. If you know anything about Magic: The Gathering, One Piece has a similar thing where like di- there's different colors and each color does like a kind of separate thing within their own color archetype. Um, blue in Magic was always described and will always be described as like the fu color, the screw you color, <laughs> um, because it's annoying. Okay, mind you, the Ten first years blue ago. deck, yeah, the first blue deck I ever went up against was when I was playing a green mana ramp deck, and so my whole thing was I needed to get these elves out so I could pump out more mana into my uh creature called omnath locust of mana and his ability was that as the turns pass as turns and phases pass mana does not empty out of your mana pool and he gains power equal to whatever's in your mana pool um so like when the deck got started you could summon him out at like a fairly decent strength like a whatever strength and then you would protect him with like you know whatever spells and then as the turns go on, you would just start of your turn, tap all of your mana, and then just pass the turn. And then he'd be like, okay, now he's at like 50-50. Like, <laughs> like it, it was crazy. But Blue, Blue says, hey, did you play a card? No, you didn't. Like, take it back. <laughs> all, of, all, of, all of Blue's cards are just negate. And it's like, oh, negate... Uh, I forget what it is. It's like negate target, not sorcery. It's like negate target. There was a word, and I remember it was explained to me, and I don't know if it's different now, but it was like um, negate the cat, negate the casting of a, or negate, negate target spell. And like through some technicality when I played, unless I was lied to, every card was a spell because the spe- the magic cards were called sorceries and they were different. So any just regular card was a spell. So you could just negate it with this like one cost blue card. Like, hey, no, you didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. That, you know. And basically the bad blue- thing to <laughs> yeah. rename. Like, yeah. 
Again, I I ha- I've been out of the magic game. I don't no, know. If that's I'm still. I'm seeing like, it. That's still like oh, quote unquote oh, it's the word. Still, apparently. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the 2023 uh, comprehensive rules, that is yeah. Like a spell is just the name of a card. Like, yeah. <laughs> and the blue cards are like negate target spell. Well, that could be anything. <laughs> like that's so bad, dude. Yeah. What the fuck? Dude, it's so crazy. It's like on that. It like it's, dude. It's just like, imagine running a, a. If you know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh deck, you're running like forty cards that are just like, What's not that even mystical, card? not even mystical space eject type. Eject like, button. Um, yeah, eject button. Yeah, yeah. Emergency eject button. I think it's called. Yeah. Like yeah, just for, forty. Uh, uh, forty imperms. <laughs> 40 Im- infinite impermanence or whatever the card yeah, is. Yeah, that's it's what like, it oh, is. I just negate target card. You didn't do that. <laughs> you didn't do shit. That's yeah. absolutely crazy. I, you know, I, I guess this is the fucking podcast now. I, I brought up <laughs> TCGs and got immediately distracted by Lorcana. I brought all, <laughs> all of this the past 30 minutes. Yes. Has been specifically to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! Because in Master Duel, the new events, one of them is like Beasts stuff kind of thing. Oh, and yeah. And the other one is Fusion and Sync... Uh, no, XZs. Yeah. Fusion Damn. and XZs. Had you said... Dude, whenever the Synchro events go live, like cracking my knuckles, no dog, I'm eating free free money today. A fucking eight-year combo. Yep. I, so... If I, if I don't win the game when my board is like 10 cards with like eight negates, I win because mid-combo my opponent gives up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's always the case without fail, but... I I come to you with the most devious idea I have yet. Um for this event I want so for the the one event it's um it's how it was like earlier there was like a fiend and fairy. Yeah, event. I saw that it's like five different it's like insects, beasts, wing beasts, something else. Yeah, insects, reptiles, wing beasts, beasts, and beast warriors. Yeah, is what that is. So I'm when I heard that I was scared, (laughs) and then (laughs) when I heard that I was terrified because I was like, "Oh God!" Like Tri Brigade, it's happening. Yeah, they banned like every Tri Brigade card in this. It's yeah, it's not super super bad for me. Because for that, I'm playing Tri-Brigades with Melfi. Or more more oh. clearly, I'm playing Melfi with Tri-Brigades. But um, that is not what I plan on doing for um, the fucking... The Fusion XZ, right? Because I, yeah. have, I have XZs that... I have an XZ deck that I use all the time. It is my train deck. I've talked about it a bunch. Shouts out Earth Machines. Shout out Earth Machines. My plan is to hobble together. I am literally breaking two pots and super gluing, not even super glue. I'm using like wood glue, hot glue to put both pots together in the shape of one pot. (laughs) Yes. In order to create a Kashtira deck with, and and you're not ready for this, Ojamas. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Oh, absolutely. Say it ain't so. I don't really have a deck list in mind yet. I'm thinking... Uh, oh, God. I'm thinking I could do something, because, like, what I... My dream is to run Kashtiras and Dragon Rulers. That's not going to happen for another six Dude. months. Dude, yeah. They're they're uh, releasing a new Dragon Ruler card. I know. I'm so excited about it. Dude. D- y- d- okay. 
it's not fair. <laughs> two things. Two things. For people who don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Ojamas were an archetype in the Yu-Gi-Oh GX era, like this, the direct sequel anime to the original Yu-Gi-Oh. And their whole thing was that their their big boss monster can like lock you out of monster zones. So like in Yu-Gi-Oh, the basic thing, the basic board layout is you have five monster zones and five magic and trap zones. And so that's where you can like the maximum number of monsters you can play is five. Um, Ojamas would pick two zones and they would block them out. So like you have no access to them. So now you can only play three monster cards. These new school cards called Kashtiras do that, but like at the turbo level, <laughs> like it, they're incredibly efficient for it. But like I, I have gone into ranked with my Kashtira deck, and I have locked all ten zones on a person on like turn two. Because Ojamas are only monster zones. Yeah, Kashtiras are dirtier because yeah. they're both. It's your whole fucking thing. Yeah, it's. Oh god, it's insane. I I th- this came to me in a vision specifically because of my frustrations around not being able to just fucking get my like dragon rulers with Kashtira right now. Yeah. To to add even oh. more context, dragon rulers when we started getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh was the newest deck Dude, it was so fun it was really fun it was oppressive like yeah you could so not like, <laughs> win against it. yeah to, to lay the lore Mermail, down for know, you but... oh yeah mermails um to lay the lore down so dragon rulers were these four dragon cards of different elements it was like earth wind water and fire there was four dragons for one for each element um their abilities when you read the card when you read a single one of their cards it was like oh um banish a dragon monster and or a fire or another dragon monster and then you can sum you can special summon this card to the field um and then like if it's in the graveyard you can banish another thing to like get it back into your hand um so like at the time uh in the 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 in the landscape of that version of Yu-Gi-Oh, we were deep into like Xyz, which was like this the the second like brand new mechanic they introduced, like after Synchro. Um, and so it was those were good for like okay, I'm running a fire deck, I can splash Blaster in, which is the fire dragon ruler, and like my deck has extendos now. I have little combos with my fire guys. Yeah. Um. I don't think there was, like, one singular person, but somebody was like, wait a minute. Like, there's four different dragons. What if I just use all four? What if I just play a deck with all four, three copies of each of the four dragons, three copies of each of the baby forms of the dragons that have effects to summon out the, the, the big ones, and then a whole bunch of spell cards that have to do with getting dragons either to my hand or allowing me to draw new cards. Which there and, were a ton of because, you know, Blue Eyes was the thing yeah. for a long time. So, so, like, the meta deck just became this archetype that I know for a, like, I, I know for a fact in my heart of hearts that whoever made them at Konami legitimately thought that they were, like, only supposed to be for splashing into decks. They're like, yeah, oh, that's like kind you, of how it worked. You it splash was... these into decks, like, yeah, it'll be cool. And then somebody was like, dog, what if I just put all four of them in one deck? What if I splash them into each other's decks? Like, and sure enough, the, the like the best deck of the format was born, and it was so much fun to play. What really fucks it is the like, or a fire card and a dragon card. Yeah, that makes. Literally, sixty-six uh, percent of Yu-Gi-Oh monster cards a resource. Yeah, if not more. There's so many like dragon cards. It's probably closer to seventy. Yeah, dude. Remember Flamvel Dragon? I think it was. It was that normal level one monster, like a dragon yeah. monster. That was fire and a tuner. <laughs> I remember just... that was a big deal. I remember 
there was like ways to like squeak out Lavalval chain. Yeah. When that Dude. was which is still banned. It's yeah. not banned, it's limited, but what? at this point, with the release of this new Dragon Rulers card in 2023, let them Konami. We we came to t- we we unbanned Yadagarasu because we realized that the game is far beyond forgiveness. <laughs> like unban all the dragon rulers. What harm is this gonna do? They're like micro dosing it because yeah, um, the OCG only thing... they're limited to one in yeah. Master Duel. They're limited. They're two, one of them is limited to one. Another one is limited to two. Yeah. See, I I would be terrified, um, if they did it, but they didn't nerf Kashira at all. And I'm talking about like like taking out one of Kashira's legs nerf, because all of the Kashira monsters have the same elements as the Dragon Rulers. Yeah. So the, the 2023 version of the un like unbanned Dragon Ruler deck is just like. The, the, the same oppression as it was before but now you don't get card zones <laughs> like, it's so much worse we live in a worse time we live in a worse time to think that like we've been playing for so long that the game changed fundamentally once before and now has changed so much more there, fundamentally there, now there have been multiple ice ages in, in Yu-Gi-Oh like th- th- the world is forever changed after these events and there have been multiple of those events and, and we're about to see literally two of them collide oh, it's, it's like gonna, when it's going to be great when the hurricane was like hitting the west coast thankfully it didn't like hit that hard for a lot of people yeah. but like in california a lot of places in the valley got hit by an earthquake that's what's Dude. happening now with the yeah. video. A hurricane. It's unrelenting. I love it. Absolute insanity. Dude, not to get us off of TCGs. Okay. You got I need me. To, I need to bring this up because <laughs> speaking of insanity, do you guys want to hear the the tailspin like into a rabbit hole I took the other day? <laughs> okay, okay, I see what you're bringing up now. Yeah. So, I, okay, I understand all of Kingdom Hearts. Very now, I want much. you to I want you to listen to that phrase again, and I want you to pinpoint the part where I say it's good. I understand all of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I do. It's okay. And We've so, gotten John tested. Yeah, 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 yeah. I scored one point below what they can legally diagnose <laughs> or below what was it? A no, legal I, diagnosis. You, I could have sworn you took it again and like I, I I took it again, but out of spite because I wanted to go past that point percentage, so I did change. I changed a couple answers. So, <laughs> damn. Oh my god. Yeah, because I remember I was doing a bit, half a bit, where I was mad that I got one point below, and I was like, "This is bull crap!" Like, oh my god. Yeah, Jesus. I took the I took the autism test that scored one point below like what the range is considered, and I was like, the bit was that I was angry that I got one point below, <laughs> didn't pass. Yeah, See, I, I didn't pass. I passed the test with flying colors. Yeah, the 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 good student bit that <laughs> I didn't pass. <laughs> <laughs> I got like a B on the test, and I was pissed. Yup. <laughs> So either way, okay, all this to say, with a friend, I was watching Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, which is, oh god, uh, the words that are about to come out of my mouth for uh-huh. the next couple of minutes, just bear with me, people. Uh, it is a Kingdom Hearts mobile game, which the mobile games are canon 
to the actual game, the stories in the mobile games, and they're actually super, super fundamentally very important to the lore, no meme. They are actually like fundamental to understanding the lore. I hate you. Um, And so I had seen the first story, thought it was like good, and then the second story was about Xehanort, who is the villain of like the first saga of Kingdom Hearts games, he which sure is like is. one to three. And there's only those games and no other spinoffs. He said, crying in a room, in a rubber room. Um, so I'm watching the story mode. It's like a four hour long story mode. It's actually good. This one is actually good because all of the, all of the crap that Tetsuya Nomura left out of Kingdom Hearts 3 to explain this character's, like, ways of thinking is in here explained, and I actually, like, I actually understand and, like, like the character now, because I'm like, oh, like, oh my god, like, it's actually a sad story. Like, I understand why he's doing all this now. This is terribly sad. Um, And also, I can see how he got to where he is by the end of the games. Like, this is crazy. Why wasn't this in the main games? You know, either way, you know the reason. Yeah, I know the reason. Um, either way, I'm sitting there and I watch it. I'm like, damn, that was a good story. And me and my friend are watching the credits and we're talking about it. I am stopped in my tracks and I say, pause that video. And my friend is confused and he's like, what's going on? I was like, that name of the producer, that's Gaijin Hunter. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Gaijin Hunter, the, the monster hunter, the... Probably the biggest Monster Hunter YouTube for, like, a certain point in time. I don't know anymore. Before World, I feel. Yeah, before World, like, the biggest uh, Monster Hunter YouTuber. He made, like, he lived in Japan, lives in Japan. So he would get, like, access to the games before we got the translated versions in the West over here. So he would be, like, playing them, and he would give out tutorials, and he would, like, show, like, his top five weapons and, like, the best builds and stuff. Dude, it was... His YouTube channel was popping off in the 3DS era. I remember. Of of Monster Hunter games. What a shame. His YouTube channel was the go-to place. Um, His name, on Twitter, and in in his game footage, he would have his name in the game, and it was A. Ivanko. And his Twitter is at a Ivanko. Uh, through he has a daughter and his wife. Like he's spoken about his wife. I think like t- 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 canonically once or twice on his Twitter. And like he like not in a malicious way. He just doesn't bring her up. Like, yeah. He doesn't really like to talk about that stuff. He talks about his daughter because he loves his daughter. But he doesn't really talk about that stuff because he's just like you know keeping that sort of thing private. But um. He has mentioned, like, oh, like, yeah, me and my wife are divorced. Um, I have, like, he has full custody of his daughter. Cool. Um, All this to say, I'm stunned, and I go, I search up his name, because I'm like, no, there's no way that he worked on Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. Like, (laughs) there's no way. To my surprise, oh, oh, to my surprise, when I search up his name and the first thing I get is his IMDB page, which cool. And then I read Adam Ivanko is a producer known for like, well, it's kind of misleading. The, the, the headline part of the page, the very first sentence of the page says like he's known for Resident Evil, Epic Mickey, Resident Evil, Umbrella Chronicles, Epic Mickey, and Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah. Um, in- That's just like, his career order yeah yeah so he was like he worked a little bit for like capcom for on resident evil chronicles he worked a little bit at konami for metal gear solid 4 he was just like additional crew member like he wasn't like whatever probably translation because that's what he was doing before yeah yeah uh cut all the way to 2007 where he gets a job at Disney Interactive Studios Japan on a little game called Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories, which is the PS2 remake of the Game Boy Advance game, which is the actual sequel to Kingdom Hearts 1 and not Kingdom Hearts 2, but I digress. (laughs) Um, The malice, the malice I feel towards this franchise. Um, And then, like, dude, he, he has been there. In my life, he it, like 
Gaijin Hunter has existed in proximity to me for so like, long. For so long without me knowing, dude. He 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 was like associate producer on Kingdom Hearts games for a lot of them. And then Epic Mickey 2 from what I see on his IMDb is when he got his like lead producer role. And then he was head producer on Kingdom Hearts Key, which is the the mobile game. Kingdom Hearts the the remakes 2.5 remake 1.5 remake um the 2.8 final chapter prologue which is the prologue to Kingdom Hearts 3 Kingdom Hearts 3 and then the melody of memory rhythm game or something that's like also oh, canon yeah. Oh, why? yeah yeah it's um ridiculous i all of this to say that this is like who this is this is this was crazy to, to, this this was insanity to sort of we know like confr- way too much about the guy yeah to be confronted with this all at once was actually insane yeah like like i'm just still processing it this guy Ga- gaijin hunter known for monster hunter content just randomly has never mentioned and works for Disney Interactive Studios and is like, oh, I don't know, like, lead producer on freaking Kingdom Hearts. It's so interesting that yeah. that's what he does. Uh, yeah. With his spe- like... Well, okay, he's credited... <laughs> he's credited as just producer. I, I, I don't know if I could say, like, lead producer. Yeah, but... it might be something different, but, like... Like still, producer is still like up when, there. When it says Disney Interactive Studio in the credits, the first thing is producer, and the first name is his. So I like the fact that we know that he has a child who's like probably like twelve now. Um, yeah, that's crazy. If I stayed, I could have at some point, statistically speaking, taught <laughs> Gaijin Hunter's fucking daughter. I know her name because he's a freaking. Th- th- thanks to IMDb, I know. <laughs> I know his wife's name and well, I don't know the daughter's name. I don't think. Rem- Final Fantasy X. Oh yeah, no, never mind. I do know the daughter's name. Yeah, not in a strange way. Because <laughs> he's offered it up. I've never has wanted op- to learn about this man. I yeah, he, know he offered up. Here. He offered up the mall the knowledge. I wanted to know about the top five best hammers, and he's the one who told me about his child. Right. He's the one who who lore dumped on me. <laughs> it's just so crazy. Dude, sh- like honestly, shout outs to Gaijin Hunter. I I, I just I am so blown Blood away by this recently on Monster Hunter though. <laughs> yeah, I'm so blown away by this discovery that like, dude, what? But because okay, because now okay, he knows like all of this stuff about Monster Hunter, right? Yeah. But like he has to have knowledge on Kingdom Hearts. Like he worked on he's the producer of the mobile game. Like he has to have an understanding of Kingdom Hearts lore. And I, with if the I way ever he went over Monster Hunter? Yeah. Dude, if I ever went over there, if I ever got the chance, I would not ask him about like to die it's the same thing as tetsuya nomura i would not ask him to like die well okay no never mind tetsuya nomura i'd tell him to spill the god dang beans i'd be like all right dude enough like just <laughs> yeah what what's going on write something like, please yeah in just, a straightforward line yeah just what's what's the ending what's the end game here what's gonna happen but like gaijin hunter i would just be like do you like do you understand this truly and if he said yes i'd be like how like this is off the record. How mad are you? Like, because... <laughs> how mad at this stupid game are you? And please tell me it's the same amount that I am. I... God. <laughs> of Listener, all things... Listener, I, I, I love and hate Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> of all things to have got... It would have been much funnier <laughs> if you didn't tell me prior to recording... About having found out this way. Dude, I was tempted, but at the same time, I was like, you, I... You had to burst. I, 
Yeah, like the the pressure valve. Well, like, I, dude, I was gonna explode. I was like, I need to tell somebody this, and so I posted <laughs> oh. it on our like private Discord. Like, bro, <laughs> like, it's crazy. I'm I'm going out of my mind. I Gu- like guy. You know, here it is, dude. Top five keyblades. Let's go. Has he had <laughs> any like? I don't. He has like on his channel. He has not. He he literally has only talked about like his coworkers and that they love Monster Hunter. He has never once said or hinted at where he works, and on Twitter either. He has never said like where he works or whatever. And to find out that he's a Disney overlord, what? <laughs> like, like of all he things, work, he works for the rat. <laughs> he he works for the rat. Damn. Oh my god. Damn. This motherfucker probably has, like, some... He probably has some deeper, darker, more expensive, non-promo, like, off-the-shelf Lorcana cards. <laughs> what was that guy's name? <laughs> he is Epic YGO meme. He's the one who's selling yeah, the, yeah, the Kevin. Elsa card. He's Kevin. He's Kevin. Oh if, you, if you rearrange the letters of his name, you can get Kevin. Wait! No, no. Okay, there's no, there, no I. There's no I. Yeah, there's oh, no I. Oh my god! You could get K- Kivon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, I really this wonder is... what because like producers like one of those things where it's like incredibly vague. Yeah, you could have anything from just having to happen bankrolled it to actually being like. A a non writer, non like actual like staff there, but like a non director because directing is a different skill set. But just yeah, being the ideas guy. Oh god, if he was the ideas guy for any of these games, <laughs> God help us all. You know, you might just have to have ask him what you are going to ask Nomura. Yeah, at this point, like dog. <laughs> Like, top five Kingdom Hearts questions. Alright, what the hell is the Master of Masters name? What's in the box? And what's the end game? What's what's the plan we're headed towards? Like, what is all of this leading to? Jonathan, what box? I could go- Oh, you want to know about the I box? Don't, I don't, I don't. I want you to be clear <laughs> about the box. I'm, I'm gonna be clear and tell you about the <laughs> box. Dear listener, I you have activated my bonk. <laughs> Franz has activated my bonk. <laughs> it's called self hatred. <laughs> no, okay. And I'm going to express this to you in the exact same way that we, the 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 fans, learned about this. Okay, let me get let me set some groundwork. Um, so the mobile game tells the story of. The Keyblade Graveyard, which in the games, that is a location that is like, all that's said in the games, in the original games, is that there was a great battle that took place here, and this was the first place in time that Kingdom Hearts was was opened. Like, the, 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 the door to Kingdom Hearts was opened, and it's implied that something very terrible happened. <laughs> um, and so, we don't know what it is. Here comes the mobile games. Uh, the mobile game starts out as like a cool little like, oh, weekly missions, funny, haha. You get to choose your, um, you're like a child, a little child soldier with a keyblade, and you get to choose your little like after school club you want to join. So like, do you want to join the the lions or the snakes or the what? There was like five different factions, kind of like houses almost like reminiscent of like this is your clan basically um and so you would do stuff in the game and you would like earn points for your clan and like there was a leaderboard outside of like the story of the game it's like oh like this clan is doing this cool yeah haha um the story then starts being revealed to you over the weeks in this game and what it is is that the leaders of the clans as well as one other guy named Lushu, who is dressed in the same way as the villains from Kingdom Hearts 2 are dressed. You never see his face, but he's in, like, the black cloak, the meme cloak. Um, th- so the, the five leaders and him 
are training under this guy known as the Master of Masters, who also wears a black cloak and we never see his face. He has access to a book called, like, the Book of Prophecies, where all of time is foretold. Like, all future, present, and past is foretold in this book. Um, We are never given insight as to what's in the book. We just know of specific characters who have seen it, and that's all they elaborate on. And it's, it's, like, what's in the book. Um, basically, it's written in the book. He gives the last page to, or he gives, like, the last page of the, he gives pages of the book to, like, each person, and then he gives the rest of, like, he gives his keyblade to Lushu, and he's like, you have a separate mission, my, my child. Um, in the book, it, there's part of it they piece together, and it's, like, not, they're not sure if it's like a misunderstanding that there is a traitor amongst the group. And basically, end of the mobile game, final mission, there is a giant war between all of the factions because they all believe that the other is the traitor and they're just, all these children Did, just this killing each other. Is still related to the box? Yes, this is setting the groundwork for the box because I need you to understand what came before and then the stupidity of the box. <laughs> so, um, like, war ends... One of the girls in the faction, like, she creates her faction, she names them the Dandelions, and basically what happens is she sends them on a mission, and she, like, emergency evacs them. She, like, sends them all in random portals across the different worlds to, like, let them escape so that they can live, and um, basically that history is, like, over. And then we get sort of the bridge and go into the main story of Kingdom Hearts, whatever, At the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, spoilers, (laughs) there is a secret cutscene that happens that the Keyblade Graveyard is shown. Mind you, in Kingdom Hearts 3, we have just fought there again. And we, like, in Kingdom Hearts 3, you open Kingdom Hearts again. And it's like you you defeat the, the guy Xehanort that you've been fighting for years. The scene opens on the Keyblade Graveyard. These portals open. All of the masters come back. Like, all of the the leaders of the factions. Which, mind you, it has been, I don't know how many years canonically since that has happened. So, like, how are they here? But we'll just hand wave that. Lushu appears. And he starts talking and he has a voice. And you listen and you're like, hmm, this voice sounds very familiar. Almost like I've heard it throughout, like, three separate games. He reveals himself and it's one of the Organization 13 members that we've known for a while who has been known to say weirdly cryptic things that nobody ever understood is shown to be Lushu, the the, the original master, or like the master's disciple. And he reveals a box. And he's like, oh, the time is upon us. Like soon the master's plan will be revealed. And it's implied that like they see what's in the box. But we as the audience don't see what's in the box. And then the cutscene ends and the credits start rolling. <laughs> oh. And it has not been mentioned since. I. Nomura. Okay. <laughs> what's in the box? I've I've been high for a, a bit now. Like, oh, since I've before pro- re- recording, right? Dude, I probably just terrified no, the shit out of I'm you. I'm so sober sorry. Now. I'm oh, completely okay. sober now. I'm conf- I Jesus Christ. Oh god, you you need to get high again. <laughs> That's what I've done. I need to, to you. escape this. Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Substance abuse. There's something to that. Hold on. Wait a minute. Substance abuse cures Kingdom Hearts disease. <laughs> I Dude, it's <sighs> wild. And there there's like more stuff if that's even a thing that your brain can wrap around but like oh god so look like if you dear listener if any of you are as poisoned by kingdom hearts as i am and you want to talk about kingdom hearts in the discord paramecia flower capital permanent invite links and all of our our social media i will talk about kingdom hearts with you and i hope you are as jaded as i am when it comes to this series like it's a love hate I love the games. They're great games. But God, Tetsuya Nomura, this story... <laughs> I just thought of one more thing. No, I... Mm. Okay, do you remember a little thing called Final Fantasy Versus 13? 
and, the game and, that was in yeah dev hell for like 80 years right and noctis was like right yeah so tetsuya nomura oh. was lead producer on that <sighs> not this um, <laughs> yeah he was he- like lead director on that um it was stuck in dev hell and i don't think we'll ever get an actual answer but the story that everyone kind of understands to be is that uh square enix was like they were going through stuff and they were like restructuring and doing all this stuff and they didn't want to like straight up fire Nomura, but like they wanted him gone. So they kept like switching teams on him and giving him like bad people and like good teams. Like It was just, they made dev on that game hell on purpose. And then finally he like left the project of his own volition to focus on kingdom hearts three and that is when the current director like stepped up and that's the trailer we got where we saw Noctis and everyone at, at, at I, I forget which E3 it was like 2014 or something. Everyone was like, oh, like Final Fantasy fifth or Final Fantasy versus 13, like it's finally coming out. And then it was hype, actually. The final the final panel of the final screen of the trailer says Final Fantasy versus 13. And then a light starts shining and the the, the logo breaks and then the numbers come back together and it says Final Fantasy 15. And it's like, damn, that was actually cool. Um, all this to say that Tetsuya Nomura in Kingdom Hearts 3 said, actually, like, I'm still going to make Versus 13 and you cannot stop me. And the secret boss of Kingdom Hearts 3, the DLC that came out afterwards, his name is Yozora. Which is like another Dude, way to say night sky, Noct- like night sky, which Noctis Lucius Callum is night sky, um, and when you beat his boss, the the scene, the cutscene that plays is verbatim the versus thirteen trailer, just with the new voices that they've given to him, and also Cole Sprouse from Zack and Cody is Yozora. I just thought that was funny. What? Uh- like that's just I, I just thought that was neat. You you saying his name anchored me back into reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that that and it snapped me out of things. But the way it snapped me out was so funny because like in my brain I was like, Cole Sprouse, wasn't he canceled recently? Oh god, was he? Dude, I have no clue and I have no where no idea where to start <laughs> on that. And I'm Oh god. <laughs> like Let's Kingdom let's Hearts. Say he I was, need Naproxa and zone. it's Nomura's fault. Yeah, I need Naproxa Zone after what Kingdom Hearts has done to me. I believe I'm pronouncing it right, and I believe Naproxa Zone is the uh, opioid overdose medication. Oh, um, uh, Nar- Narcan's the the name. It's... Or Narcan. What's Naproxa Zone? It, it, no, you're you're, you're Napro- somewhere... Naproxen. No. Naproxen? Dog, I should know this. Oh, Naproxen is Naloxone? for arthritis. Dude. Is Naloxone? Yeah. Naloxone. Maybe? It, Naloxone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Look, the Bro, thing I'm for so, I'm, overdosing. I'm on top of my shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Naloxone, Dude, look, Kingdom yeah. Hearts... Kingdom Hearts is a journey that I have taken. Dog, I thought this Once... was going to be short. I still had fucking Gaijin Hunter's Twitters up. Still to talk about yeah. how he's like still active on there, and he's kind of <clears> like <throat> weirdly horny posting about his Baldur's Gate three character. Oh yeah, dude, he he goes nuts sometimes. Gaijin Hunt is crazy. He he is he is pretty darn crazy. I, hey Ivanka, he started playing Final Fantasy fourteen recently. Yeah, he's plays been, like, a loving fucking it. Mikote. Yeah, Nya- dude, <laughs> she doesn't know yet. <laughs> Uh, she doesn't know yet. <laughs> oh my god, dog! I'm obsessed with Kingdom Heart, uh, uh, um, Final Fantasy X on the Kingdom Hearts team, like literally the team. No, like and no, like plays um like a female Mikote, like oh god, please. My brain, I. That'll be it for us this week. Um, 
We usually, yeah, talk about the One Piece chapter, but there was none, so we had to devolve into degeneracy. Yeah. Um, we'll be back next week with uh, chapter 1092, I believe. And and no, and no a good story, and no Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and... I can't tell... I don't know if Kingdom Hearts somehow makes me appreciate the One Piece story even more because of how how tightly written and good it is. I was going to make a comparison um, when you were explaining stuff from the mobile game. Um, there was, like, one thing for a moment where, like, I don't know. I don't even remember. I don't remember because I don't remember what it was, and I don't want to sit through it again. <laughs> because we all, listeners included, just blacked out for, like... <laughs> an hour yeah just about yeah um but yeah yeah um what well, one piece is our thing and we'll be back with 1092 in the meantime all our social media is at paramecia fancast except for twitter that's at paramecia cast um we our episodes go up every single week to our hosting service libsyn paramesiafancast.libsyn.com those go up uh sunday night monday night something around that you know yeah Mon- monday following the official release yeah <laughs> that's the most consistent one we got we got stuff to take care of and um discord i had mentioned that paramesia flower capital invite links are basically everywhere on our social media if you'd like to support yeah. us, liking, rating, reviews. Unfortunately, you've heard it before, but the metrics do matter. Oh boy, do they matter. Yeah. So we'd appreciate yeah. anything you can do on that front if you'd like to. Um, and if you want to support us materially, you could go to uh, patreon.com slash paramecia. And support us that way. And that money goes to just John not paying the server costs for this. And that's happened so much so that we've got an upgrade in data. So that if John really wanted to just keep going about Kingdom Hearts, he really could have. If I wanted to stunlock Franz and you, dear listener... You couldn't stop me now. Literally, had you not said Cole Sprouse... (laughs) I would still be in a yeah. stubble, dude. <laughs> dude, that's that's my uh, that's your stand. If I had a stand, I would want Rohan Kishibi stand because I would just write Kingdom Hearts lore in people's brains, and then they would like die. <laughs> 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 that's how it would work. No, um, yeah, the Patreon. Uh, like I said, it allows us to get little girthier episodes, which are always fun. Um, also just, it's going towards better equipment, uh, after the hosting site. So, uh, we're hopefully going to be getting some new and better equipment soon. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, shout outs to our patrons, Maggie Rice, Ice Stomp, The Lost Crab Rangoon, Zach, Connor, Ashok Murthy, Corey Agra, Footy Clam, James Sullivan, David Brownfield, Sam Thompson, Charles Ruth, Ronald Miller, and Bandle Vandal. You guys are legends and heroes of the game. I um, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts was the crack theory. Yeah, there's nothing else. Kingdom Hearts is an example of a living crack theory. A crack theory that is so ridiculous that you, you think that it's played for gags bro but as you played the games you realize that you are the gag that the the, last you the last week i've been playing baldur's gate 3 and it has reminded me about the the D &D deep lore that i know and i feel like i'm the youngest person to know and i have gone i have gone back to the wikipedia mines for the deep lore yes I I understand ridiculous things about like actual D and D lore, and Kingdom Hearts is what gets me. <laughs> God, how many people have been the goddess of magic, Mista? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ooh, humans. Is it, the, it, is it the same number of people that have wielded Oblivion? <laughs> is it? I I thought they were just aesthetic. <laughs> I are 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 the Keyblades diegetic? Are they all like a real thing? Is um <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> no, I I'm stopping. <laughs> 